Chairman Inhofe, Ranking Member Reed, distinguished committee members, it is a privilege to appear before you today as the President's nominee to become the 11th Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I want to recognize Secretary Wilson, as you did, Chairman, for her long and devoted service to this nation. And it means everything to Laura and me that she came all this way to speak on our behalf. I thank her for that introduction. To begin, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce my wife, Laura, to, committee, to the committee, so thank you for that opportunity. Laura and I met when I was stationed in Los Angeles, and we've been married now for almost 32 years. <coughs> when we met, my long-term aspirations did not include a lifetime of service to the United States Air Force. But over and over again, opportunities to continue to come along, to do what I love, and Laura always encouraged me. During this time, her own passion for the men and women of our nation's military has grown. Today, she's an advocate in our communities and works to empower and care for our military families. She is an amazing woman, the best person I know. She is ready to fight for this country alongside me one more time. And together, we also had the joy of raising two incredible children, Katie and Chris, both successful in their own right, each with weddings this year. Katie's here with us today from Boston, but Chris couldn't make it all the way from Colorado on such short notice. But sitting next to them is my brother, Scott, representing my mom, dad, and my sister in Alabama. And I've been lucky to have them by my side every step of the way. This last Christmas, I was asked to talk over with my family whether or not I would consider serving in another position if, I was, if it were offered. I wasn't sure what I would say, but this was clearly a family decision. That's when Katie made it quite simple, asking me, if you love this country and you love the people you work with, and you still feel you can make a difference, then why stop? Period. Simple. So that's why I'm here. I still love what I do. And if confirmed, I look forward to continuing my advocacy for the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and civilians of the Department of Defense. When the nation provides them the right tools, they have proven time and time again they are gr our greatest advantage over any adversary. But as I sit here today, as has been discussed, I'm intensely aware of the allegations made against me concerning one of the most serious problems we have in the military, sexual assault. It has been a painful time for me and my family. But I want to state to you and to the American people in the strongest possible terms that these allegations are false. There, were, there, were, there was a very extensive, thorough investigation that Dr. Wilson described, which revealed the truth. Nothing happened, ever. <coughs> And I'm also thankful to this committee for all the time you took individually and together in an executive session to study and understand the facts. I really think the integrity of both the investigation and the nomination process are critical, not only for everybody involved, but for our nation's citizens as well. So I stand by the truth. And I thank the committee for its unwavering commitment and support to our national defense, as well as the men and women who serve. If confirmed, I look forward to working across the Department of Defense with our friends and allies, the interagency, members of Congress to address an ever-widening spectrum of challenges confronting our nation. While we've not yet ceded our advantage, we are facing direct challenges across all domains, and particularly in areas of long-held superiority like space and cyberspace. We're in a position where we must address resurgent peers who have long-term strategies to supplant the global influence of the United States and our allies. Finally, the threats from violent extremists and transnational groups will persist, and so we cannot lose focus on this asymmetric challenge and the challenge they represent. In order to address these myriad challenges, the Department must continue to field a best-in-the-world force. No son or daughter of ours should ever go into combat with second-best equipment. We do not ever want a fair fight. We must be prepared to meet the threats directly head-on in order to deter and dissuade adversary aggression and, if necessary, fight and win our nation's conflicts. To do this, we must maintain our ready and lethal force, and we cannot break the bank doing it. So if confirmed, I commit to you that I'll work to find effective and efficient solutions to these challenges, leveraging the best of American ingenuity and know-how. So Chairman Inthoff, Ranking Member Reed, members of the committee, thank you again for the opportunity to appear before you today. I thank the President and the Secretary of Defense for their confidence in me. Uh, I also wish Chairman and Mrs. Dunford and Vice Chairman and Mrs. Selva Godspeed on their pending retirements. They're, they'll be missed, and if confirmed, I will work hard every day to carry on their legacy, maintaining the highest standards of the Joint Staff, the Department of Defense, and of our nation. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, uh, General Hyten.